hello and welcome to the MC Cup Series. Once again here on YouTube, getting ready for our second race here at Charlotte of the season as the season winds down. And um, just a, a quick update on Chris Mack. Well, we know he had a few injuries. He will be out for the rest of the season. And um, his best friend is going to be replacing him in that 86 car. That is the... Um, okay, I almost I almost just said the name or the number and stuff of the car, but that is the driver starting, I believe, 35th? I can't quite tell, but his, his best friend, Valeria Wolf, is going to be replacing him in the 86 here for the last couple of races of the season. And she is starting, I cannot tell, I'm sorry. But yeah, there she is right there, her first race. Can she possibly turn Papyrus Racing's luck around as Casey Mears seems to be having some sort of an issue? Pulls down to the apron before the race even gets started and looks to be headed to pit road. He is. So, your outside poles that are having a problem going to head down the pit road following the pace car in. Your pole sitter, Kevin Harvick. And now your new outside pole sitter, that's the outside road, outside line just moved up a row. That's Brett Bodine on the high side now. Pace car in case he begins on pit road. And the green flag is out. We're racing here at Charlotte. So, very strange turn of events there, but nonetheless, the green flag is out. Heading down in a turns one and two. For the first time now down the back stretch. Look at Harvick trying to hold off Hermie Sattler as Sattler goes to his inside. Side by side through three and four now. Hermie Sattler is going to lead the first lap. How about that for him and his small team? Look at him flying down the front stretch heading into turns one and two. Now off of turn two, now on the back stretch once again. They are three wide further back. That's the 57 of Jeff Bolts in the middle. He gets through. Hit Valeria Wolf moving up in her first race here. Off to a pretty good start. Look at them fly down the front stretch into turn one. Jason Keller. On the bottom, three wide once again. Dale Jarrett down the back stretch, taking him three. And hearing on the radio, the 86 driver is complaining about a very loose race car. It wants to snap on her every time she heads down into the corner. So that's not good. We're going to keep our eye out on that. But for right now, she seems to be doing pretty fine. As we head down the back stretch once again. And this is the crazy uh, Super Speedway-like package that we saw with the other intermediates and one and mile and a half tracks and even the two mile tracks. So now we're three wide once again, Morgan Shepard. On the outside, trying to get by Matt Kenseth. Here comes Jeremy Mayfield on the inside. Three wide down the back stretch. And trouble in the back. Oh, man. Val, Val Wolf into the inside wall. Multiple cars around. And Christian Fittipaldi involved as well. The caution's going to come out. There's Brian Vickers caught up in it. Fittipaldi driving away. Wolf having an issue. Casey Mears. A few laps down. Back out on the racetrack. Going to try to gain a couple of spots. Kenny Wallace with damage. There's Ricky Craven with some left side damage. Robbie Gordon as well. Racing back to the line. And we're going to go back and take a look at what just happened here. Chaos on the back stretch. Where's the back half of the field? And look at this. Three wide off the corner. It all starts. Val Wolf runs out of room. Had to chase the car up the track. And around it went Jason Jarrett hard into the inside wall. 
and all these guys pile up on the outside. The Vile Wolf spins down to the bottom of the track. He's going to go into the inside wall here with the right side of that car. And Papyrus Racing's luck. Just, we thought it could have a. We thought they had a chance to turn it around, but still, just having a horrible season here. As they spin around, Dave Blaney with some contact with Brian Vickers late in that. 86. We're going to go on board with her here. It's Val Wolf. Probably the main cause of this. Let's see what she saw. Yep, just ran out of room. And into the inside wall. Just ran out of room there. For a spin. I don't think she wanted to be three wide at all. I mean, Ricky Craven. Yeah, she's running the middle. Craven runs high, checks up a little bit, and she gets put in a, a position that she doesn't want to be in. Can't really back out with this package because you you need your you need momentum, and if you lift off the gas too much, you will lose a ton of spots. As we go from Robbie Gordon's on board here, and. Unfortunately, things like that just happen with this. <gasps> Sorry, because you can't afford to get off the gas. And uh, took out a couple of good cars. Nobody should be taken out of the race from this, but still. Multiple cars involved. It's going to slow a couple of these guys down for sure. But everyone still going. I think everyone should be, for the most part, fine to continue along in this race. Val Wolf's tires are down, so it's going to be a struggle for her to get back to pit road. But other than that, I'd say she can get make some repairs and get back out there. She should be all right. But yeah, that's your first caution of the day. Army Sattler is your leader. And uh, they're all going to probably pit under caution. Yep, there you, there you go, heading down pit road. So we're going to be right back after this. See where everyone lines up and get ready for the restart. Okay, the green flag is back out. Hermie Sattler, once again your leader. <clears throat> Look at Joe Nemechek to the high side. Val Wolf coming off the pit road right now. Whoa, sideways. It's going to stay down low on the racetrack and out of the way for the most part here. There's nowhere really for her to go. But she is staying out of the way for the most part. She's up to speed now. It's going to let everyone by. You see her letting off the gas, letting people by. Just trying not to interfere with the rest of the race. Just trying to collect points for Papyrus Racing. Meanwhile, out in front, Hermie Sattler starting to get a challenge from Carl Long for the lead. Looking at Val Wolf to the inside of Christian Fittipaldi, and he just took the air off of her spoiler there. Almost turned her around doing that. She's going to try it once again here. Passing on the inside in a stock car could be... It can be very difficult sometimes, but she gets by him. Oh, and she's going around on the front stretch. Oh, big hit. And the caution comes out once again. A hard crash on the front straightaway. Foul Wolf finally got by. Christian Fittipaldi was just trying to run her race. Fittipaldi was damaged. And what happened here? Oh, it just came around on her. Coming off turn four, it, it, just, it just spun. I mean, there's no warning or nothing. She just, it went around and she's holding the brakes and then nowhere for Casey Mears to go. She came back across the racetrack. 
nothing she could do. She was down in the grass, the track, you know, how it kind of curves on the front stretch. And there was nowhere for Mears to go. As we go on board now with that 41, Casey Mears. See his point of view in this. Wow. I mean, he had a chance to get on the brakes and avoid that there, but by the time he got there, um, it was too late. He had to stay in the gas and hope to make it through. But at this point right here, he could have gotten on the brakes. By this point, he has to just stay in it and hope to make it through. And that, unfortunately, is not what's going to happen here. Because she comes right up the track right in front of him. And he plows her. A very hard hit. He was still going about... He got on the brakes at this point. But 170 right into the right front of that car hard hard wreck and I think the 86 was going less than a hundred by the time he got there so a hard crash luckily everyone is okay but this is not the way is not the way Val Wolf wanted to end their first race here in the MG Cup Series. And she does say on the radio, sorry guys, it just spun. And there was nothing she could do by time and she got into the grass, but she did say on the on the radio she said she was sorry to the team. Not how her first race, not how she thought it would go, not how she wanted it to go, but unfortunately it just happened, it was just one of those things, I guess, these things happen from time to time. So take another look at it from this angle, she comes out of the grass, look at her, she's on the brakes, car still kind of pushing up the track, and then... Mears nowhere to go. Slams into her. Then goes into the wall pretty hard as well there. Sends her in a, a spin. So uh, that's our second caution of the day. Ravens on pit road, which was sort of an issue as well. But yeah, that's our second caution of the day. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back to the MG Cup series here on NBCSN. And we're getting ready to go green once again. Hideo Fukuyama is your new leader with Morgan Shepard in second. And Joe Nemechek in third in the 25, racing for Pendrick Motorsports. Then there's the Roush Racing, number 99 of Jeff Burton behind them. And through turns three and four. Sorry. I don't know where that, where I where that yawn came, came from, but sorry about that. Um, well, the green flag is back out, and Hideo Fukuyama is your leader. And uh, lead them off into turn one. Morgan Shepard in second place. How about that for him? We saw him towards the back earlier in the race, and now here comes Joe Nemechek to his inside down the back straight away. Nemechek, and now look at Jeff Burton making it almost three wide on the bottom. Contact. Got his nose in there. Almost turned the 25. They keep it straight. And now 
Riding down the back straightaway once again. Hideo Fukuyama still your leader, the Japanese driver. Got his start in NASCAR and those exhibition races in, in Japan at Suzuka a few uh, years ago, back in 1995. Or whenever. Uh, they did that event for a few years. I'm not... I forgot which exact year he did, but yeah, it was around that time. It, I, actually, I think it was around 98. I'm sorry. My brain is just not really working right now. Sorry, y'all. But, um, yeah, now he's out in front here. Dale Earnhardt, the late Dale Earnhardt was the one to get him started in racing, to, or in NASCAR, I should say. Told him he should come over and start racing these stock cars, and now he's here in the MG Cup Series, leading the race. He's won a race at Bristol, probably the most chaotic race of the season, but he survived and won it. And now he's leading here in Charlotte, the home of NASCAR. And of course, we all know. Atlanta coming up in a few weeks. Atlanta Motor Speedway in Hampton, Georgia. That is the home of the MG Cup Series. Because this is where, that's where all the test races happen. This is where everything gets started. And, uh, or got started. And, um, yeah, it's home sweet home for the series, so. Mark Martin working his way up. Dale Jarrett as well. Started about 7th on the restart. And now he's looking to make his way up to the front. Jeremy Mayfield is actually your leader right now. I didn't even notice him getting to the front. If I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. I just was not paying attention. And I did not see Jeremy Mayfield. So he is your leader. Roush Racing teammates side by side for 4. Mark Martin to the inside of Jeff Burton. Has to back off of it there. Burton makes the high side work. And now he's going to get a run down the front stretch on Dale Jarrett. Can he possibly challenge him? Jarrett has a run on Fukuyama. He's going to look for second. Hideo shuts the door on him. And now look at this. Three cars under a blanket. Make that five cars. As now Mark Martin's got a run. And he's pulling Hermy Sattler along with him. Side by side for second. Jarrett gets his nose in there. Hideo has to slide up. Side by side still. Off the of turn four. And now at the line, Jarrett's going to clear that 66 machine. Going to slide up in front of him here. And now, Dale Jarrett going to set his sights on the leader. The 19 of Jeremy Mayfield. In that. In that Ray Everham, number 19. I was looking for the sponsor, but it's literally just Dodge. So... I, I was expecting it to be the Siemens car, but I guess not. But the caution is out. Apparently we've had an incident involving Matt Kenseth, who was stopped on the track with heavy damage to the right side of that car. Let's go back and see what happened here. 
Oh, there's two cars going for the same hole, and of course it wasn't there by the time he got there, and the end of the wall it went, and luckily nobody plowed him, but he gets stuck between the apron and the, the banking. So your leader, Jeremy Mayfield, still, as the caution comes out, but, um, Dale Jarrett was hot on his tail for the lead there, so we'll have to see how this plays out after pit stops, so we'll be right back after this, and I guess we're back now. So, we are back, Jeremy Mayfield was leading when the caution came out. Um, but didn't get the best pit stop. Your leader is now the 99 of Jeff Burton. <clears throat> so we're gonna see how this goes. He had a pretty fast car on that run as well. Dale Jarrett still in second place. And does not get a good restart at all. The green flag is back out. Hermie Sattler to his outside. And now look at this. The 0-1. Of Jerry Nadu to the inside of Jimmy Spencer behind them as well. Might get a few different lines going already here. But Jeff Burton pulls out ahead and look at them making moves on the back stretch here. Everyone goes down to the bottom. No, and that's the preferred line heading into the corner. A few drivers who make the high side work. Look at the run Joe Nemechek got through three and four there. And now he's on the back bumper of. Elliot Sattler in the 38. Gonna try to take it three wide. He's there. He's got his nose in there. Now, oh, the Sattler brothers make contact. Hermie and Elliot both up the racetrack. Hermie Sattler gonna try to come back on his brother Elliot. On the outside, they're side by side. Heading down the back straightaway. They're still side by side. Hermie Sattler nose is out in front of his brother Elliot. And, oh my goodness, I cannot believe they made that work. Sattler was just about up in the outside wall there, and he passed Elliot, uh, or Hermie was about up in the outside wall when he passed Elliot there. And Elliot Sattler stuck in the bottom, can't really seem to find the grip entering the corners that he needs, but gets to run off, then clear up and go to the high side on Mark Martin. Might try the outside line here in three and four. Gets it to work a little bit better than he did on the bottom, but he's got no grip. We might try it again here in one and two as he clears Mike Skinner. I don't know. I don't think Elliot Sattler's car is handling that well. Is there three wide behind him here? Elliot Sattler makes the high line on entry work. Comes down to the bottom, and look at these guys all over the place behind them. Terry Labonte just about went up into the outside wall in the background. There are cars everywhere. Here comes Derek Cope in the 37. Now heading into turn one and turns one and two once again. It's a huge pack of cars. Absolutely wild racing here. Mark Martin falling back. Morgan Shepard trying to work his way back up. And Larry Foyt, AJ Foyt's grandson and an adopted son. Right there on the back bumper of the six Viagra machine of Mark Martin. Here comes that number one pencil oil car. That is Steve Park on the inside. Look at all these cars down the back straight away. Man, these guys are flying. Meanwhile, out in front. Jeff Burton, still your leader, but now getting a challenge from the 66 of Hideo Fukuyama. Once again, to the inside. And now side by side for the lead. Burton could not find the grip on the high side, but might get the run off to be able to stay with him here. He's going to need to get the draft and try to reel him back in through three and four. But man, he did not need that checkup at all there. And now on the high side, it's Joe Nemechek. He's going to cut back in, try to cross over on the 99. And look at this, Jerry Nadu to the inside. The 0-1 of Nadu. And side by side with Joe Nemechek going through three and four, or one and two, excuse me. 
But he got a big run through three and four and almost made it work, but had to back off a little bit there. Here comes Jimmy Spencer. Man, all these guys really have a chance to win. Any car on the lead lap, I'd say, has a chance to win with this package. This is absolutely crazy racing. And now, Jeff Burton trying to get something going. It looks to be falling back a little bit here. Here comes Joe Nemechek. He's going to slide in line, actually. Now looks to the inside. Get a little bit of clean air on his nose. Couldn't quite make it work. Jerry Nadu. Got a good three and four. He's got to run a Nima check, but I don't think he's going to get there by the time they head into turn one. Going to get another, have to get another good set of corners here through one and two. And he does. He's on the back bumper right at 25. Has to check up a little bit. Meanwhile, further back, looking to the inside, that is the four of Mike Skinner to 14 of Larry Foyt. To the inside of Elliot Saller and Bobby Labonte, side by side through three and four. Behind them, Dale Jarrett. Oh, look at this big pack of cars. Jason Keller in front of Casey Atwood. The 81 and the 91 holding each other up a little bit here. Keller must have checked up out of turn four or something. Because everybody was on his tail being held up. Terry Labonte to the inside. John Andretti challenging Casey Atwood. Kevin Harvick going to challenge Andretti. Atwood about got up into the outside wall. Here comes Jason Keller on Brett Bodine in the 11. Side by side through one and two once again. Look at this. Now Jarrett had to check up a little bit. Going to get the draft of the two of Rusty Wallace. And now heading into three and four once again. Look at this. Wallace going to try to make a move on the 46 of Carl Long. Long gets the door shut on him by Morgan Shepherd. And Shepherd looking to the inside of Derek Cope, who's looking to the outside of Ricky Rudd. And now, look at Steve Park underneath. Mark Martin has to check up. That's going to hold everybody up. Look at this. This is going to stack the whole field up down the backstretch. Ricky Rudd to the inside of Steve Park. Here comes Park to the inside of Martin again. And Rudd with a big run through three and four. He's going to look to the inside of Steve Park, taking it three wide through the trial or uh, yeah, through the, I don't even know what it's called, the quad over, whatever it's called. Man, these guys are all over the place. Look at this huge pack of cars. I mean, that's... Ricky Rudd is in 15th, so that's 15th on back to about maybe 25th. Not even that, to about 30th. All these guys in the... in the draft here. Jeremy Mayfield is actually a lap down. Didn't even notice that. Had a really slow pit stop there. Now in the back stretch, they're three wide. Ricky Rudd pulls away from that pack a little bit. Casey Atwood has the check up. And now here comes the 11 of Brett Bodine. Here comes everybody. Behind Casey Atwood. Look at Morgan Shepard on the high side. Casey Atwood on the high side now trying to hold off Brett Bodine. Bodine with a good run through three and four. Atwood gets the run off. Bodine had to check up and man, this track is actually pretty narrow compared to some of the other mile and a halfers on this on the schedule. So passing can get very difficult sometimes. And man, we're seeing it here.
Meanwhile, your leader is the 66 of Hideo Fukuyama. Joe Nemechek in second, trying to run him down, doing everything he can. And he is gaining, but not much. Jimmy Spencer, Mr. Excitement himself, in third. And look at Boris Said in the 67 in fourth place. Larry Foyt's gotten his way up into the top five, but now it's being challenged by Tony Stewart. Meanwhile, further back in this huge pack of cars, there's just chaos. There's cars all over the place. Brett Bodine to the inside of Carl Long in the 46, and now side by side through one and two once again. Look at Jimmy Johnson to the inside of Brett Bodine, and cars are heading down the pit road. So green flag pit stops are underway here at Charlotte Motor Speedway, and we remember what happened last time here during green flag pit stops. Hopefully we don't get a repeat of that, even though the cars are a lot closer than they were last time, so there's actually a higher chance of that happening again. We'll have to see how they manage it here. So far, so good. Everyone's getting in pretty well. Nemechek trying to hold off the 99 of Jeff Burton. And now cars exiting pit road as we head down into 1 and 2 once again. Let's see where these guys blend out. Nemechek and Burton, are, I believe, are they already have pitted. Today, Fukuyama was your leader when Green Flag Pit Stop started. And look at Jimmy Spencer underneath, trying to stay with him, but Fukuyama with the warmer tires is going to get the advantage and hold him off. Heading into turns one and two once again. Their leader is actually the 67 of Boris Said, and he comes off pit road in third. So Fukuyama is now your leader once again. I believe. Unless I'm missing something here. I don't think I am. The day of Fukuyama crosses the line and looking at our leaderboard. Yes, he is your leader, but Jimmy Spencer right there. Not letting him get away easily here. He's got the draft to work with as well. And look at this. All these cars back here side by side. And Looks like uh, Boris Said's going to drop like a rock here. Bobby Labonte trying a different line. He's going to go way up to the high side. We got a car smoking, and I believe there was a crash. The caution is out. And Ricky Craven has damage. What happened here? There was a big accident in three and four involving teammates. Oh, no. Steve Park and Jason Keller side by side in the three and ran out of room once again into the wall. They both go pretty hard. Jason Keller down the racetrack is hit hard over the top of Steve Park and upside down. Oh, it's still getting hit hard. Massive hits. Dale Jarrett's taken out. There's Ricky Craven getting his damage. There's Matt Kenseth as well. Steve Park is destroyed. Multiple cars all torn up. Jason Heddleski in the 90 is done. So a terrible crash in 3 and 4. Looks like everyone is okay, but some big hits there. I don't think... At this point, these wrecks aren't even being caused by the package anymore. It's, it's by the drivers not slowing down for wrecks. I mean, 
this is something you gotta do. You have to slow down. You have to hit the brakes to avoid these accidents. And a lot of these guys, I know positions are important, racing back to the line and stuff, but man, you just have to hit the brakes. And this is another case of drivers just not doing that. And it took a two car incident, made it a three, four car incident. Okay, maybe that would have happened anyway, but nowhere for some of these guys to go. But look at Jason Keller way up into the air. Look at Robbie Gordon, bang, gets collected in it. So these guys, there was no, nothing for them, nothing for them to do. There was nowhere to go. They were right there when it happened. So that's about five cars, maybe six, seven, eight. But then here's Jason Hedelski plows into the door of a stopped Jason Keller. Matt Kenseth plows into Hedelski. Here's Dale Jarrett and Kevin Harvick getting involved in it as well. And then watch this, Ricky Craven, very late. I mean, this could have just been those first couple of cars that were involved in it, but it grew bigger and bigger. These drivers failed to get onto the brakes soon enough, and this is becoming a real problem. We're going to have to go on board with Matt Kenseth. We're not even at Matt Kenseth first. Let's go on board with Steve Park in a one. Luckily, nobody hit Park as he was parked sideways. I'm sorry, no pun intended, but he was sitting there sideways on the... On the in the racing line, driver side door facing traffic, facing oncoming traffic, so that could have ended a lot worse for him. He could have been injured a second time this season. But, um, watch this. Nowhere for Wallace to go, and he punched that 81. That's another camera gone. Let's go on board now with the 17 of Matt Kenseth and see what he saw in all this. He gets on the brakes. He's still on the brakes and just... There's no slowing down at that point. So he tried to do the right thing at least. He at least tried. But this, this is where he sees smoke. He could get on the brakes here. And he waited till it was too late. And at this point, nothing he can do but plow right into it. Same. Let's go on board with Kevin Harvick now. He's right behind Kenseth. He starts getting on the brakes much sooner. Still gets a little bit of it, but not as bad as Kenseth did until Craven just plowed behind on board now with the 32 of Ricky Craven. Let's see what he saw. He's behind Christian Fittipaldi. I think he's trying to get by him. Because Fittipaldi's lapped and has heavy rear end damage. And he gets on the brakes. He sees a hole, tries to go high, and closes up before he could get there. One last look. I mean, there's Jeff Fultz got away with not too bad a damage. He got up into the wall pretty good, but I'd say compared to everyone else, oh man, another big hit for Jason Keller. And then another one right here, and then here's the final blow from Dale Jarrett. Since Jarrett's fender flying. This could have very well been avoided. We're 40 minutes into this video, and we're not even halfway through the race, so... Yeah, that just shows, uh... We are taking a lot more time on these wrecks than we usually do, so... Yeah, getting ready to go green once again. Okay, I guess not.
Ah, here we go. Here we go. All right. Now we're getting ready to go green once again. Uh oh, the, oh, there we go. All right. So, multiple cars taken out in that last accident, but we are ready to get going again. Look at all the skid marks on the, on the apron of the racetrack down there. It shows you what kind of carnage happened there, but coming into the trial board and the green flag is back out. We're racing once again here at Charlotte, or Lowe's Motor Speedway. I'm sorry, not Charlotte, Lowe's. Lowe's Motor Speedway in Charlotte. We'd love to see a name change. Hopefully we get that in the future. It's kind of confusing calling it Lowe's Motor Speedway in Charlotte, North Carolina. But we're three wide in the turn three. Hideo Fukuyama falls back. He was your leader on the restart, but so much for that. Cars flying through turns one and two there. Now headed through down the back stretch and into turns three and four. Look at the 42 of Jamie McMurray. The rookie up in the third place. Trying to hold off Mike Skinner. Meanwhile, out in front, Boris said is all over the back bumper at 99. Does not pull out. McMurray on the high side gets passed by Mike Skinner on the bottom. Here comes Ricky Rudd to his inside now. He's going to have to get passed by Rudd. And now look at Mark Martin with a big run underneath both of them. Boris said, still trying to reel in the 99 of Jeff Burton. Just can't figure out a way to get past him here. He's got the run through one and two. This is his chance. He heads to the inside down the backstretch. Boris said, side by side, does not have the momentum to stay there. Still on his bumper, though, through, one, through three and four. And now here comes Mike Skinner, who is inside. He's got a huge run. He's going to try to take the lead. And he's there. Off of turn two. Down the back stretch. Side by side now for the lead as Mike Skinner pulls out and tries to make the move. He's going to stay on the inside. He sticks his nose in there. Side by side off of turn four. Still going at it here. That's weird. Just a little bit past halfway. And Mike Skinner, the Pontiac, the number four Kodak Pontiac, takes the lead. Here comes the 67 of Boris Said to second. And now Said going to have to reel in the fourth Skinner. Look at Ricky Rudd, side by side with Jeff Burton. Burton dropping like a rock here. Meanwhile, these mid-pack battles are still just as crazy. Drivers are being a little bit more patient after that last wreck. Morgan Shepard with a push from John Andretti is going to get past Carl Long. And the 18 of Bobby Labonte behind them as well. Moves being made down the backstretch. Terry Labonte with a big block on Jimmy Spencer. Now to the inside of Jamie McMurray. McMurray goes way high, almost up into the outside wall. And makes it work. What a move for Jamie McMurray there. Now through 
One and two once again down the back stretch. McMurray gonna try to catch Tony Stewart and Mark Martin. Or said to the inside of Ricky Rudd. Rudd gets to run off the high side. Robbie Gordon, a slow car, a lap car. It's going to slow everyone up. This bunch is the field up. Everyone's going to get greedy and try to make their move for possibly the lead now. Jerry Nady on the high side gets stuck behind that 31. Nobody gets past Mike Skinner, but look at Jimmy Johnson at the inside of Boris Ted. And that's going to move him up in the third place. Now, Jimmy Johnson to the inside of Ricky Rudd for second. Jimmy might have a chance to win this thing. He's on the move as he takes the second spot from Ricky Rudd here off of turn two. And now down the back stretch, side by side, he's going to clear him. Heading into three, Rudd checks up. Almost wrecked, got a little loose there. Rounds racing teammates side by side off the of turn four. Mark Martin takes the spot from Jeff Burton. They're still side by side. Martin finally somewhat clears him, but doesn't come up because that would have been risky. Jimmy Spencer off turn two. Clears Jeff Burton. Gonna get in the draft immediately and try to reel in Mark Martin. Further behind them. Cars everywhere back here. Jamie McMurray, who was in third place a few laps ago, just trying to hold on to the top 10 spot as Jerry Nadu challenges him for 10th place. And he's got cars behind him just about taking it three wide. I mean, looking at Morgan Shepard, he looks about ready to take it three wide. Joe Nemechek is going to hop in line behind the 01 and have a massive run through three and four. I'd hate to take a break during all of this, but unfortunately, we have to. So we're going to be right back after this. I guess that was green flag pit stops, but we are back here at Lowe's Motor Speedway. Green flag pit stops round two are underway. Whoa, look out, Boris said. Came out in front of Jeff Burton and almost got run over. Very risky. Move for him to merge up like that there, but I guess it worked for him. He slowed down to 99 just a little bit. Said gets in line. And now all these guys in the middle of a pack. I believe Jimmy Johnson... And a few other cars haven't pit it yet. Or maybe they have. I don't know. But your leader. Okay, Jimmy Spencer is your leader. He's on pit road right now. Jimmy Johnson and Ricky Rudd battling for what could possibly be the lead. Jimmy Spencer through one and two. Mike Skinner, has he pit it yet? He might have. I think Mike Skinner might be your leader now. Unless he comes down this time. But nope, he takes the high line. So Ricky Rudd, all these guys battling for what will be second. To try to have a shot at catching Mike Skinner for the lead here. They are only a second back. They could work together and get back up there. But Robbie Gordon going to make that difficult for them. He sticks it right in the middle of the racing line. All these guys fanning out down the back stretch now, trying to take a spot. Robbie Gordon comes down three wide through three and four. This might not end well. They're going to run out of room. Contact being made. Jerry Nadu and Jeff Burton bouncing off each other there. They're finally going to get by him. 
or a few of them are. And now they're going to try to split them three wide. Nope. Couldn't make that work either. But the inside line is going to get past Robbie Gordon. Now the outside line is just being held up. Jerry Nadu takes it three wide. Contact rubbing against Casey Atwood. Somehow made it work. Still three wide off of turn four. McMurray about got turned there. He saves it. And that's how you get by a lap car. These guys actually made it. Wow. I'm impressed. But that lost these guys a lot of time. Two seconds back now. From race leader Mike Skinner. I'm trying to reel him in here. Another lap car. That's Kevin Harvick coming up. Mark Martin at the inside of Jeff Burton. Once again, these two cannot get separated from each other. They're always, they always seem to be battling each other here today. Through three and four. Look at the 49 of Ken Schrader. Having a good run here today. He's going to move up into the top five. Getting by Jeff Burton. We are getting closer and closer to the end here at Charlotte Motor or Lowe's Motor Speedway. Here in our second race here in Charlotte. And uh, drivers starting to pick it up a little bit. The intensity is rising. These last laps. Line down here. We're coming to, we're 10 to go now, or 11 to go, actually, but, man, these guys are driving like it's the last lap, every single lap, and they are catching Mike Skinner, and they're within a second of the four. Mark Martin has a very fast car here today. He might be the one to take it from Skinner. As he is trying to pull away from this pack. He is doing everything he can to reel in it at number four. And you can tell we're getting down to the end. I believe there's one last set of pit stops left here in this race. If not... Oh, whoops. If not, then I will be surprised, but knowing how NR is, these guys like the pit right before the end of the race, and it's very annoying. Look at Mark Martin. Through one and two, he is there. Mike Skinner, pretty much a sitting duck at this point, as Mark Martin goes to his inside. Skinner going to try to pinch him down and squeeze in front of him, and he does. Mark Martin not giving up yet, though. Here comes Jimmy Spencer to his inside. Martin might have to try to make the high side work. And he does exactly that. Blazes by on the outside line. Now down the back straightaway. In the draft of that four once again. Going to try to pull himself clear of that 70. Can't. Going to try to stay in it. Jimmy Spencer, though, with a massive run through, one, through three and four. Now going to try to take the lead from Mike Skinner, Jimmy Spencer, Mike Skinner, two drivers that have never won here on the channel in the MG Cup Series. Now going at it side by side. Mark Martin won at Atlanta, and I believe he won another race this season that I just can't remember at this point. So all these guys hungry for a win. Mike Skinner falling back. Jimmy Spencer. Mr. Excitement has got to be very excited inside that car as he comes around. Five laps to go this time, or six laps to go this time by. I'm sorry, I was thinking of 100, not 101. But six to go for that number seven. 
serious dodge. Five laps to go for Jimmy Spencer as he pulls away from the six that time by Mark Martin. Gets checked up a little bit by Robbie Gordon. That is not what he needed at all. Jimmy Spencer loves to see that in his mirror. And down the back stretch once again. Four to go for Jimmy Spencer. Gonna try to use that lap car up ahead. Kevin Harvick to try to get a bit of a draft so he can keep his distance on the six of Mark Martin. Mark Martin is driving as hard as he possibly can to try to run him down. Three to go for Jimmy Spencer. And Martin is catching. He's within a second. If anyone has a chance, it's Mark Martin. But I don't think he has enough time. Can he get there? Two laps to go. Jimmy Spencer doing everything he can to keep Martin in his mirror. Mark Martin doing everything he can to try to run him down here. Jimmy Spencer has to check up. Harvick runs the high side. Gonna let him by pretty easily, it seems. White flag in the air. One more time for Jimmy Spencer. And Mark Martin starting to get a challenge from Boris Said in the 67. And Martin lost a little bit of ground that time by. And down the back stretch and into turn three for the final time. Through three and four, out of turn four. Jimmy Spencer is going to come to the line. And he's going to win his first race in the MG Cup Series. How about that for Jimmy Spencer? So Jimmy Spencer gets it done at Lowe's Motor Speedway in our second race of the season here in Charlotte. And man, what a race. Probably the best race we've seen since Atlanta with this package. And even though we did have a really bad accident, nobody got injured. Overall, the race was just, uh, it was pretty good. So that's going to do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe. Hope to see you guys next race. And until then, peace.